Vaigiri Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaigiri Ji Ki Fateh, Ji Anisang Ji, welcome back after the break. As you saw that we had some very inspirational guests, Jere Aisige, in the first half. You know, once again, I'd like to stress, please make sure that you do follow them, get in touch if you know anybody who may be suffering from anything related to, say, the suicide symptoms. We now have a very inspirational guest here with us. And as you know, one of the things I always try to do is get the females that we have in the community to come forward. So we have um, Pam Verdi here from Education Independence Charity, and she's doing some brilliant stuff. Um, it would be very interesting if the CV John there to get involved in any kind of seva. We're going to be talking to Pam about the charity and about the work that she's doing, but also what her upcoming projects are. And one most important question, why is it important to do the seva that she does? So let's go over and introduce her. Vai Gaji Ka Khalsa, Vai Gaji Ki Fateh. Vai Gaji Ka Khalsa, Vai Gaji Ki Fateh. Thank you, Pam, for giving us your time and coming on to talk about this amazing charity. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. So I'd like to know a little bit about an, an introduction, actually, really, in terms mm. of, you know, a little bit about yourself, what you are doing in terms of your job, and then we'll go on and talk about this um, education independence charity. Right, well, my background is in education. I've been teaching for, like, 28 years now. I've been a head teacher for 10 years in a large primary school in Harrow and um, of course because my passion is education and young people and um, you know I see that over the years I've seen children um, grow, become you know the most inspirational, they inspire you as well the children. So recently having been, you know education is my job mm -hmm. so I do that job every day and I get paid to do that job. But what I wanted to do was to do something extra, mm -hmm. to do a little bit more. And um, we started this charity. And it came about actually because um, I'd gone to India back in 2011 and I'd stayed in our bind, which is Bakapur Tamai. Okay. And I uh, see, and we stayed there. And I was actually really blown away by the humility and the mm -hmm. simplicity and how much people yeah. you know people would bring you things and happily share and so I thought I didn't get a chance to visit the school at that time in the village uh, but I really started thinking about what more I could do but obviously being in a full-time job here I've got three children of my own and it is quite a tough job being a head teacher I didn't really get a chance to do anything. Yeah. But then I went back to India in 2015. I took my mum again, my sister lives there. And um, so my mum went to visit my sister and my mum's just had her 96th birthday actually oh. last week. So oh, happy birthday, yeah, Happy birthday to my mum. <laughs> and um, so we took her back in 2015 and we stayed in Hashiarpur, as you know, my sister was there in Hashiarpur. Let's go and see what's happening in the Pind. And while we were there, um, one of the neighbours said to us, there's another family that's come from Birmingham who we, I grew up with. And, um, you know, we were very close growing up together. And um, so I bumped into, went to, went to see them. And, uh, you know, when we went to see the family, uh, their son Cubsy was there. Mm -hmm and he'd gone over there. We started chatting, it was a bit of a surprise because Birmingham's only an hour and a half away and there we were a thousand miles, yeah, and thousands of miles away bumping into someone in yeah. a bind. It's, it's quite surreal really. But actually it's funny you say that because even though we say the world is so small, like it's such a big, with the world is so big, but actually it's very small as it well is. because when you go over to India, and I've had that where you bumped into somebody who's actually yeah. down the road from your bend here. Yeah, so, exactly. So, okay. so we, we didn't have long, we swapped numbers really quickly and he told me that he'd been there um, to do some, because he's a fitness instructor for Bangra Burnoff. Okay. And it's based in Birmingham. And he'd, da his dad passed away about three, three or four years ago. Mm -hmm. And his dad used to um, do a lot for the bind. Their uh, bind is Marpal Langeri. And he, you know, that generation, and I don't think we realize, um, and you hear afterwards when people have passed away, they're very humble. And he used to give money to the to the, his local school in Langeri uh -huh. for uniform for the children, but he didn't. He kept it all very much to himself. He was quite humble about it. Mm -hmm. So, 
we started thinking about um, what we could do. So we swapped numbers really quickly. It was a bit crazy. It was a bit mad. I got on one of these crazy buses in India back to Shardbur. How was that? And um, that, that was quite an experience because okay. you travel by taxi every okay. you go there, don't you? Yeah. So I got on this bus and it was a bit of a weird experience. Firstly, bumping into someone that you hadn't seen for yes. such a long time. And secondly, actually being in a situation mm. where I was thinking of doing charity work as well. And it's like a bit um, of a coincidence that is. you're looking to do it and then you meet it was somebody. A, yeah. It was a coincidence, but a nice coincidence. Yes. So when we got back in touch, when we came, uh, just one thing quickly I do want to say is that while I was there, because I could, didn't stay in my bin, but I wanted to do something for the school, I did give, I, I think it was about £50, it mm. wasn't a lot of money, to one of the ladies in the bin, that, you know, to, and I said to her, Cause, is there something you can do for the children, mm. for the primary school children? And later on, once we'd come back to England, she'd got in touch with my bubby and she said um, that she'd gone and bought shoes and socks for about 30 children. Yeah. And my bubby topped it up a little bit, but you know, under a hundred pounds, bought 40, 50 pairs of shoes and socks to get the children through the winter, because we went in October. And just before I'd got there, because schools had started here in September and I went in October, I'd bought my son one pair of shoes um, for sixty pounds, wow. his school shoes. So I thought, you know, look at what a little bit can go yeah. a long way. So these are the sort of the thoughts behind it. But really, it took off when um, when I met Cubsy in in um, the Bind, and we came back, and then we came together to form the charity that we've got. And you know, when you first went out there, and you said that you know you saw Jere Bajje and Bajia like they don't, they're very like they don't have. The, the pleasures what we 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 have here where we go we'll go and buy a pair of shoes for that much money we don't think twice really when you went there what would you say is your i guess your like your experience of seeing that they don't really have the things that we have here and how how did that make you feel at that time well i think that was it is about when when i said that i went back it went in 2011 as well it's about the every little bit that they have that they're happy to share mm. and the hospitality is amazing you go to anyone's house and it doesn't matter how much they've got and and everyone's got a lot less than we have we're very privileged here yeah. and that's what it made me realize is that we are all very privileged I mean here we look and some people have got four cars some people have got five cars some people have got a five bedroom house some people yes. have got bigger yeah. kitchens than you have and we look and we think you know, so and so has got a bit more, but actually, we're very privileged with whatever we've got here. Yeah. You know, we have um, our children have an education. They have a roof over their heads. They have clothes on their backs. They have food. You know, and they ha we have quite extravagant food as well. Yeah. Like we could go out. We, you know, people buy a cost of coffee that costs three three pound fifty, yeah. and just think, um, one pair of sandals that we bought for one child when we went last year was. Um, I mean, the exchange rate was a bit better than it is now, but they were two pounds mm -hmm. for a pair of sandals. They were 200, 250 rupees, something like that. Yeah. And that's the price of a coffee here. Yeah. So, you know, if when you put it into perspective like that, it, that that's really what made me feel um, that I, you know, I didn't, we go there and sometimes people think, you know, well, you just want to buy yourself things. Yeah. But it's nice to think about Others. what you can do for other people. Yeah. And that little bit, like you said, goes so far in yeah. India as well. There's so many, so much you can get for so many people, not for one person. You know, and the, and the other thing I'd like to touch on is really, in terms of the children themselves, what, what are the ages um, within the schools? And I guess, what are the different areas that you're working in at the moment currently? and ages of the children. If okay. you could talk to us a little bit more about the, the projects itself in India would be really good. Okay, lovely. So what we're doing is supporting, I see Jere Sade Pinda, Baka Pratamai is my Pind, Kabzi's Pind is Marpal Langeri. And I see, we wanted to support um, our own villages okay. because they're our father's villages, that's where our ancestry is. And we wanted to give back to those villages. So, as he pella socia, que as he apne jere pinda, utte as he jaye, because as he utte jande rande ya, utte di community bi sanu jan diya, sade kar bi utte hai ke ya. My brother goes back every year, utte unanu sada bi pata ya, the sanu unada bi pata ya. So utte ja ke bi sanu, adani lagta ke as he praye ya, jab karne ya, as he sare community vich sare sanu jan diya, and and that's a really nice feeling yeah. as well. It's really good. So. 
when we went to, and, and then in the village, obviously, people know you. They, as you badly very just school, go the ages of the children because I'm a primary school head teacher. My passion's always been with primary school children. Okay. So in both villages, the children range from nursery children from the age of three up to the age of 10, 11. Okay. Uh, middle school, but high school. And some of the children who have been in education, who have been in education, who have been in colleges, सारे नहीं जानते और especially कुड़ियाँ नूनी पेज दे बार मुंडे ता चले जानते हैं and that's another thing that I want to um, start working on is trying to change the attitudes of people to you know for girls and yes. education because that is my passion yeah. uh, because like I mentioned earlier my mom's 96 so when I wanted to go to university um, many years ago I'm talking about over 30 years ago now uh, my mum was very much the attitude was much like that and it was a bit of a battle with my family mm -hmm. that I wanted an education and and hence the logo which I'll talk about later is education independence yes. which to me my education has given me my independence to be the person that I am and yeah. do the things that I do. And that's really um, important how you touched on um, females yeah. because obviously, yeah, for us, again, we're very fortunate here, you know, but now, I mean, probably more so that parents encourage their children to do what they, you know, they feel is going to help benefit mm. them in their future life, whether that's their career, whether it's them starting up their own business, but to study and make something of themselves. How is the, how is it currently out there in Punjab? Is it still very much the same with females compared to males? I think, I mean, I can speak for, I still need to do quite a lot of research into this, but I know that I have my own parents in the village, and um, the life of the girls in the village, the attitudes are very different, and they have written books, and they have worked, and they have also said that in the village, that their attitudes are a little bit different, and that's, that's another part of you know the attitudes we need to change but we need to change the attitudes of the um, of, of the parents yeah. and, and why are they scared to send their girls you know yes. there are lots of reasons and we understand those but it's about you know allaying those fears yeah. and saying okay look at the future of what your girls can do yeah very true and there's very bright young ladies and you know there who who need that opportunity yeah. to you know, they need to be given the choice, don't they? You have a choice. Definitely. You, you can go down that route of having an education or you can choose not to. Yeah. And as a female, you should have that choice. I don't believe that choice should be taken away from you. Yeah. And that's really important. And then you, you know, you yourself, obviously, you know, you've got, you've got a family, you've got three children, you're a head teacher, and I can imagine it's true, education now, probably working in the education sector is probably a lot of hard work. I mean, I know with the children, yeah. they get so much homework and we didn't even get that. Being, a, you know, a head teacher, and that's a lot of work. Um, you've got your family life, you know, you're working, you've also got this charity. The biggest question that everybody's probably asking, the secret that time love there to do everything that you do because time is one of the things that we always say we never have enough time. Do you know, I think when you've got a passion for something, you do make the time, you find the time. It hasn't been easy because we started this, like I said, um, October 2015 and it's, you know, it's 2018 now. So I do feel that it's taken up every little bit of time that I can find, I do that. And uh, my job is very demanding and um, we've got a family to run but I've got a very supportive husband at home who um, cooks and cleans and does a lot to help at home as very well. Good. Very like good, I like that. Very good, very <laughs> good. Um, so, and, um, and he's been very supportive. So we've the, I've run two marathons, the Ealing Marathon, yeah. for two years now to raise money and he's run with me as well and we've trained together as well. So we have a good partnership there. And my children are very supportive. Um, my daughter, my eldest, who's 24, she recently got her first job. She's a paralegal. And um, the first thing she said to me was, Mom, I need to give you some money for your charity. Oh. And, that's, and that's, I think, the values of Sikhi. You know, yes. we were saying earlier that one of the things that our parents have brought us up with, you know, Mum would always say, okay, it's something we've grown up with from a very early age. We've seen our parents do it. And wherever that money is given to whichever charity, um, we were always brought up 
to know that it was important, charity work was important. Because, you know, that's part of our religion. That's one of the biggest parts. Seva, Gurdwari to see a see short day, see Seva Karde, see to see a Langar di Madat Karde. We grew up doing that in the Gurdwara. Do you think that, um, oh, by the way, Sangaji, sorry, please, Marf, that there might be a little bit of interference. There's some building works going on outside the studio, so please um, do bear with us. It's actually just stopped now. <laughs> but do you think having the support of, like you said, of your husband and your children makes a big difference within our community that if you didn't have that, do you think it'd be a lot more harder to be able to do the things that you're doing? Because I think that point that you touched on is so important within our community because, you know, I meet a lot of people who... They've got the passion for wanting to do lots of things, but they don't have the support from their family. Mm. And I think then that not having that kind of, you know, drives you to then live that life of the routine, which you might not necessarily want to be in, but you've got the passion of wanting to do something else, which you're doing. Mm. Do you think that that's why oh, you, it helps so much? That's majorly important that you've got the support of, of people around you. I've got the support of my family. And, and I think it's the insp your passion, when you've got that passion, and it's that inspiration as well, but also like um, I've talked about um, Cubsy, who I met in yeah. um, Birmingham. He's very passionate about this. He's passionate because it's something he wants to carry on, um, his dad's legacy. And and I think there's there's several things to this. The first thing is that I've wanted to do this, yeah. but it's quite a scary thing to do on your own, even though True. it sounds, you know, like. Um, it, it hasn't come about easily. There's a lot of thought that I've been thinking about doing this for a few years. But when you meet someone who shares that passion and you partner up with somebody who you can work with really well, because that's really important. The two of us are doing this, but we work together really well. Yes. And we share the same passion. We, we drive each other to, to the next thing. What are we going to do next? Yeah. We discuss what we're going to do. But like I said, you know, my husband ran the marathon and he trained with me, so he was helping me in, with that side of things. Yes. And my children are very supportive. But also, I was overwhelmed by the support I got from my staff and children in my mm. school as well. Yeah. And the staff have been absolutely fantastic, not just with the donations that they make, which they've done for two years now, um, but with the encouragement and the, you know, they believe in it. They're, they're in education. All of my head teacher colleagues um, in Harrow have been very very supportive yeah. and they ask about the charity and they make donations and I've got a friend of mine who runs a psychology um, uh, business and he he's a large donor for, for my charity I've got a friend in Dubai who makes a large donation yeah. so um, I'm, I'm very overwhelmed by how much people yeah. are willing to give you yeah. so the first year that I did this when I ran the marathon and did ask for donations. I was actually blown away by how many people, how many people actually are willing to give. Yes. You always get those that are a bit cynical about mm. what you're doing as well, and I've had that as well. Have you? And uh, yeah, from family and friends as well. You know, well, what you're doing with the, you know, the money, you know. So we, we we go over to India ourselves. So we hand we buy everything. Yes. We hand it over to the children. We hand it over to the head teachers. We keep in touch. Because that was actually going to be my next question, you know, obviously we have, you know, Sikh channels worldwide and just generally, it's not just Sikh channel, generally, you know, in, in the world we have a lot, a lot of people that are quite sceptical about giving to charities because you hear a lot of scary stories. Yeah. And one of the biggest questions I, I get asked quite, quite, you know, a number of times by people because we have a lot of charities that come on. You know, how do you know where the funds go? What is it that the charity does to completely be transparent in where their, their funds are going? Could you maybe tell us a little bit about how you deal with those people that are sceptical and what it is that you say to them to reassure them that, look, if the seed donors and then, you know, this is where it goes and, you know, we can mm. guarantee you that this is the cause that is going to go. What, what is it that you say to them or well, reassure them? Well, with us, because I'm not a registered charity, so we rely on the goodwill of friends and family and trust as well. So, asi, jinne paise kathe hunde ya, every penny goes to the charity, goes to the children. So, for instance, um, as we the last year, the government provide the textbooks and uniform and hot meals. I didn't realise, but they provide hot meals for the children right up until throughout the bind, up until okay. they're 18 and leave to go to to um, colleges and universities. And as we go there, we we talk to the head teachers about unanu kedi chizdi lora. They, 
ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਲੋੜ ਸੀਗੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਸਟੇਸ਼ਨਰੀ ਪੈਨਸ ਪੈਨਸਲ ਸ਼ਾਰਪਨਰਸ ਰਬਰਸ ਤੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਪਿੰਡਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹਿੰਦੀ ਵੀ ਸਿੱਖਦੇ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਵੀ ਸਿੱਖਦੇ ਇੰਗਲਿਸ਼ ਵੀ ਸਿੱਖਦੇ ਆ and you know the other side of this is that there's some very very bright children who work okay, really imagine. hard yeah. because they know that education is their the only way that they're going yes. to really get anywhere in life and their attitudes to learning are incredible absolutely incredible okay, which I'm blown away by really. yeah and from a very young age they work so hard so anyway as you take a belly very as you guys is and we need and we need to put like as he got my up but we turned up um, at the school ਤੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਹੈ ਟੀਚਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਚੀਜ਼ ਦੀ ਲੋੜ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਕੀ ਫਾਇਦਾ ਹੋਊਗਾ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਿੱਧਾ ਫਾਇਦਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਕਿ ਇਦਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਪੈਸੇ ਦੇ ਜਾਈਏ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਵੀ ਡੋਨਟ ਨੋ ਕਿ ਪੈਸਿਆਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕੀ ਹੋਇਆ ਕੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਇਆ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਵੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਵੀ ਬੋਟ ਦਾ ਸਟਾਕ ਆਫ ਬੁੱਕਸ ਐਂਡ ਪੈਨਸਲਸ ਐਂਡ ਪੈਨਸ ਐਂਡ ਆਲ ਕਾਈਂਡਸ ਆਫ ਬੁੱਕਸ ਫਾਰ ਦਾ ਚਿਲਡਰਨ ਐਂਡ uh so we bought all the stock we bought a water filter for a bin we bought some chairs we treated the children to some food as well so some burgers because they don't always eat nice yeah, food they don't there. always have that okay. they did a session of bangra burn off as well yeah i mean if you could yeah. just we have less than 5 minutes left yes, now, i just okay. want to say if you could hold that up because yeah. i wanted you to talk us through a little bit about that actually well like i said earlier it's very much um the education independence i said earlier to me is about education gets your own independence and i'm doing it with my friend cubsy who runs a fitness classes in birmingham so if you're in birmingham and you want to do some good fitness go and look up bangor burnoff and so that's where the charity the logos come yes. we've recently just this week changed it so we've combined them together together okay and so that's very recent i haven't got anything that that's printed on but you know look out for this and hopefully it will be a big thing in the future i don't know so and and yes and anybody in yeah. birmingham who wants to get involved in getting fit actually that's probably the best way actually that you can because with a little bit of the bhangra in the background yeah. and you you don't realize you've done an hour workout please do get in touch if you're in the birmingham mm. area and then could you talk to us a little bit about our jede booklets hege ya thorje like what they yes. have what's in them these if you go on to youtube and google um education independence and bhangra burnoff goes to india you'll see some of the work that we've done which will bring it to life because there are videos in there to show what we've done but these booklets that I've brought along are really just the pictures of all the work of all the work that we've done we bought sandals for the children i forgot you to mention to that, that. One, yeah. bought oh. sandals for the children and um we bought a water filter and they did a session of bangra burn off but you can see that in um the youtube video that we've got which is very clear in there you can see how much the children enjoyed it as well and you can see how humble those children are and how the hospitality was fantastic yes. when we were there and a memorable experience because we know that we keep in touch with the head teachers so yeah. the children do ask for um ask about us but just one quick thing i do want to say yeah and if you're going to say what we, is your message to we them? do have um ambassadors out there so my um family that's out there the girls they go and check regularly uh they go to the schools they okay. keep in touch and you they've been back and we have topped up stock in one of the schools since and um the children uh, have been the langedi children have been involved in competitions writing competitions reading competitions speech competitions so we get regular feedback from the head teacher in the school yeah. and we get pictures from the children they've been involved in the sports so we're going to india um at the end of this month and i'm taking my children with me okay um because i want them to see what we're doing out there my husband's going as well and so is cubsy and um a lot of the curriculum there is very academic so what we want to do is do some extra curricular things with the children there so we want to take sports equipment football skipping ropes and have like a a sports day with the children yeah because one of the things we realized is that when we had the short break when we were there and we couldn't stay long because we were running from one school to another and running to the shops to buy stock as well. Um we didn't have time to stay for very long but the children when they came out for break were just fantastic because they wanted to play and we realized that there's we we can nurture that side um yes. of the you know the extracurricular side of it. And then really finally just I just wanted to give your full social media page. I know you've got one Facebook that's being set up for yes. the female. If you could give finally give your details for all social media so that any of the sangat watching they know where they can go for more information. Okay, so we if Bangor Burnoff has has got a Facebook page and um I'm setting up a Facebook page for education independence but it's not live at the moment. 
but you can get in touch. Should I give an email address? You Is can that, do, yeah. Yeah, I'm pamverdi at hotmail.co.uk. Um, so if you do want to find out more about our charity, then do email me on that and I can get back to you. Brilliant. And I do have a Facebook page, Pam Core. I know there's lots, but um, find me on there. Yeah, we can always stay them yeah, in the right you can, you can see um, that my Facebook page will have some um, charity work on it as well. Brilliant. Um, but either Bangor Burnoff or Pam Core okay. and thank my email address. So I look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, people. thank you so much for thank coming you very on. Much. And good luck with the future projects as well. Much. So, Sankaji, as you can see, um, you know, Benji has said about getting involved, getting in touch if you want any information. Please make sure you visit the social media pages. Um, and again, if you didn't quite catch that, please do contact us and we can give you the details. If Sarto Koi Galtea Mahoe, please send a maf Kadio Pulla Chokani Mafi and join us next week where we'll have another set of guests coming on The Breakfast Show. Vaikuchi ka khalsa, vaikuchi ki fateh.